afternoon. For, this is the first exhibition that um, has been dedicated to sculpture only in the gallery, and um, I'm really pleased with it. Uh, I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, it's very nice to have some of the artists here this afternoon as well, and I welcome all of them. Ken Scarlett um, probably needs no introduction to anybody here. Let me tell you. Stop at that point. <laughs> let me tell you a little bit about him. He's a very, a very um, generous man in the way that he um, works and assists people within the arts industry, both the artists and gallery gallerists as well. He's also quite um, uh, self-effacing, I think. Um, he. Uh, Ken started as a teacher and um, then moved sometime later to the National Gallery of Victoria where he became the education officer. And I think probably with it there, Ken, that you got your real love of sculpture. He, he was um, a working artist. He went on, he became the um, director of the Griffin Gallery and um, is very, very widely known as um, an author uh, on the most definitive book on um, where's it gone? On uh, Australian sculpture. If you haven't read it, um, I suggest you have a good look at it. It's a bible, <laughs> um, and he has also, which he doesn't make a lot of noise about, been celebrated. Uh, for the work that he has uh, contributed in his lifetime to the arts with um, a medal um, of the Australian Honours. So he's an OAM, is that right? Yes. <laughs> so without any further, can I um, introduce Ken to you, please? Thank you. Well, thank you, Lorraine. That was uh, not always entirely accurate, but very um, Lorraine, ladies and gentlemen, I'm particularly interested to see you know, a big group of people here today who obviously have come because they're specifically interested in uh, sculpture, and particularly Australian sculpture, so you're very, very welcome. And like Lorraine, I'd like to welcome the number of artists who are here. Uh, good to see them supporting uh, this exhibition which is extraordinarily diverse. You've got a great number of works, but I think you've displayed them remarkably well. Now, it was some months ago that Lorraine contacted me and asked whether I would write something, an introduction for the catalogue, and I happily agreed to do that. Some time elapsed, and she rang me again and wanted to know whether I'd open the exhibition. So my first reaction was, well, what else have I got to say? You know, I've said it all in the, in the catalogue. I can't be repetitious. And then a fairly radical idea hit me. I thought, we won't have an opening speech at all. What we'll have is a mere five minutes of complete silence while you all read the catalogue. <laughs> <laughs> there are all my platitudes all there for you to read. Um, why should I repeat them? You've got them in your hot little hand. And I thought, well, no, no, that's not quite right. That sort of serious silence is not quite right for um, the opening of a, a gallery exhibition such as this. It should be a much more chattering occasion. So I thought, all right, I've got to go off on a different tack. And I started to think and I thought it might be relevant to point out that Marion and I, and Marion is over there, Marion and I have got four pieces of sculpture in our very small front garden. And I counted them up. We've got 15 pieces of sculpture in our lounge. Now, some people might think that's excessive. I don't think it is. I think it's a matter of scale. And I thought it might be interesting for you to see that's the smallest work we've got. <laughs> And I think it's a sheer delight. I bought that in India, in Madras, oh, I don't know, 30 years ago. And I still look at it with great pleasure. I think it's a very nice little piece of sculpture, Nandi the Bull, the representation of um, the Hindu god Shiva. So it is a matter of scale. And I suppose that the, the good thing is that um, 
And not one of these works are certainly of the scale that you could put within your house. Well, the works in that lounge room vary between Nandy the Bull. Um, none of them are huge, but we've got a very lovely gust lava. Earlier than these works here, it was a time when he was more puritanical, when wood was wood and stone was stone. Uh, subsequently, of course, he's been very happy to paint stones and paint wood and use the primary colours that you see in these works. And on the mantelpiece, we've got um, uh, a very linear work of Jeff Bartlett's. Quite, quite different again from the works you've got here. The Jeff Bartlett we've got relates to the work, you might remember the work used to be in the moat in the front of the gallery, it's now in the moat behind the gallery. It's the next work he did and it relates fairly closely. But of course, if you look at the works here, they're quite, quite different. And I thought that's a point that I'd like to make. Artists don't stand still, or if they do, they quietly atrophy. Um, I think the real artist is constantly changing, constantly searching, evolving new ideas, evolving new techniques and new materials. And that, I think, is, is um, something we've got to take into consideration. It used to always infuriate me when I was running the Griffin Gallery, and perhaps a year or 18 months later you'd have an exhibition by the same artist, and people would come in and say, I don't really relate to these works, but have got any works that were shown at the last exhibition? You know, <laughs> it's taken 12 months or 18 months to come in touch with the artist, um, but that's, that's it, isn't it? Artists keep on moving. Um, sometimes, of course, the, the changes that artists make in their development uh, are quite fundamental. On our mantelpiece, we've got a very small piece of work by Clive Murray White. Now, Clive Murray White, at one stage, was into smoke sculpture. Down at McClellan Gallery, he used some canisters left over from the army disposals and organised the, the drift of smoke and called it smoke sculpture. He went into heavy metal. He also did a number of, um, of uh, multiples. And we've got a multiple, it's a little breast-like form, cast in bronze, but it was actually cast from the inside of a drinking, like a, um, <coughs> a champagne glass or something rather like that. And he cast, you know, one in aluminium and one in bronze and carved another one in marble and so on. So he's gone through incredible changes. And not his ripe old age, he hasn't reached that quite yet, but he's now, you know, what you might call a neoclassicist. And his little marble head over here uh, is quite uh, classical in the choice of materials <coughs> and, and in its style of carving. So you have this incredible um, range of material from Clive Murray White in marble. Um, is the Peter Skipper marble wrong, is it? No, it's not. That's what I thought, mm -hmm. yes, I thought it's just it's what's around... It's on the, it's in the front courtyard on the right. Ah, uh, right, yeah, I think I missed that when I walked in. So you've got people who are still working in traditional materials like marble, bronze of course, and now we have many more foundries in Australia. We've got a lot more artists casting in bronze. Uh, which is not to say that, you know, the simple, good, traditional material of wood isn't in, in, in use. And uh, Mike Mingles here with his very strong work. And that fascinating one right at the front door. And I looked at it and, and wondered, you know, was it wood? Was it steel? Uh, it's got all the characteristics of his wood carving, uh, that direct sort of approach to it. So, um, and of course you've got to realise the fact that it's, it's become very much accepted to um, assemble from various materials. As Rosalie Gascoigne has done, we were trying to work out, I sort of feel I know those parrots, someone must know, were they on a package of uh, corn flakes or what were they, you know? They look very familiar, someone will know, but it's a sheer delight the way she's used that old panel of wood. And a whole range of new materials. William, what's this material? Polymer cement, yes. 
Yeah, well, see, that's a new one. This is a relatively new one. Mm -hmm. uh, looking like glazed ceramic and, and quite permanent. So this you'll find, I think, fascinating. This incredible range of materials. You couldn't have missed Deborah Halpin's cheeky monkey down the front there. And I wondered, you know, if Bert McKennell, Bertram McKennell, his uh, female figure in the corner there, trying desperately to look discreet. I think, I think McKennell, you know, if you saw the big show, which was at the Upco of New South Wales and then came down to Melbourne, his depiction of the female, I think, is extraordinarily sensuous. Um, cloaked, you know, she's partly cloaked, but um, pretending not to be really uh, very, very sensuous. But I think uh, in his more Edwardian, more conservative age, trying to be discreet. George Baldison, of course, is far less discreet. His, um, his females down there uh, expose themselves very, very much. So there's this wide range of attitudes and so on. I really wonder what would um, Bertram McKennell say, you know, if he came back here and he saw, uh, <laughs> saw some of these works. On the other hand, you know, if we think back to Bertram McKennell, there was a great controversy about the uh, new sculpture, so-called, the group that he was within. We look back now and we wonder what's the difference between his work and other contemporaries, you know? The differences don't seem to be extreme. But I think no one will be able to look back at the late 20th or early 21st century and not be aware of the incredible diversity, the incredible uh, range of works that are on display here. And I think this just reflects our society, doesn't it? Our society is going through such astonishing change. I feel totally, totally left behind, you know? I haven't got a mobile phone. I'm prepared to admit this openly. <laughs> I haven't got an iPod. Um, I'm, I'm of that, that age being left behind by technology. We are living in this period of an incredibly rapid change. So I think our artists have got to reflect that, as indeed they do in this exhibition today. There's a wonderful diversity. Uh, I hope that, um, that you can look around, envisage your lounge room, work out exactly which one will go where, <laughs> and know where to put on the red stickers. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>